Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you for tuning in. So you're in the music store and perhaps there's a PSR like this one or a Tyros or a Genos on display and you fancy having a go or maybe you've just bought one of these arranger keyboards yourself. You want to make some music but you're a bit intimidated by all of these controls. Where do you get started? Well, this video is for you. And for everybody else that's that's curious. Not a sponsor. Okay, you've powered on your Tyros, Genos or PSR. These Yamaha arrangers have worked in a very similar way for years, if not decades. You'll find you have a piano voice across the entire keyboard. Now, the first thing I recommend you to do is to choose your style. What sort of accompaniment, accompaniment, that's hard to say, would you like to have today? Do you want a rock, maybe some dance music, a Latin style, some R&B, country, whatever it might be. Today, I think we're gonna do some ballroom because we don't do enough ballroom on this channel and you guys have been asking for it and I'm listening. So let's go into the ballroom category down here. You maybe can't see because of the mirror, but I have a number of different styles now to choose from. I'm gonna to go to the second one, which I rather like. I was playing it the other night. It's called Vocal Waltz. So we're gonna select that one and then I'm gonna exit and now you'll be able to see it's selected down here. But nothing's happening yet. We've still got our piano sound across the whole keyboard. So I want you now to switch on the accompaniment, which we're gonna do with this large button all the way over to the left. That's where it's been located for years. Switch that one on and something's happened. Now we've got... that. Yes, the keyboard now has a keyboard split. Let me explain how this is going to work. So with our right hand then, we will be playing a lead line, a melody perhaps, or some accompaniment, accompaniment, I cannot say that word, on our right hand. But as we get to this point here, and you can configure where that's going to occur. I've set it up here. So my left hand then is going to be triggering the accompaniments, directing the band, if you like, in the left-hand part of the keyboard. And you get, when, when you don't start the accompaniment playing, you get this quite cheesy string and slap bass sound or something. But don't worry about that, because that's gonna disappear when we start playing the sounds. But that's what you can expect when you enable the accompaniment without the accompaniment actually running. You get a split, two different sounds and this very strange thing going on in the left hand. Let's talk more about what we need to do with our left hand because it's a slightly different technique, well quite a largely different technique actually, to what you would normally do when you're accompanying yourself just on a regular piano organ or something like this. Here we need to do some special tricks with our left hand to tell the PSR what chords we want the virtual backing band to play. So let me show you here. Um, maybe you can see, but it's in quite small letters there on the screen. It's actually gonna tell me, you can have a little practice when you're in this mode and see if you can figure out how to tell it what chords to play. So just playing a G is not enough in this mode. And you'll probably, if you're a uh, more seasoned piano player, you'll be used to playing triads with your left hand anyway. And that's the technique that's recommended for these. There are some other modes where you can do a major chord by playing one key, a minor by playing two, like a major, a dominant seven by playing three. Don't use that mode. I would not encourage anybody to use that mode because it's not musical at all and it doesn't translate to other keyboard instruments. So use the default mode. mode. And there are a couple of others as well where you can actually get the keyboard to recognize things you're playing over the entire range of the keyboard. I'll do a separate video about that. But for now, we're gonna use the default settings, which is what you'll have when you unbox your PSR 
Tyros, whatever it might be, or see one in the shop. So back to our left hand voicings. We can do a major like that. There's a minor. We can even do inversions. Check this out. If I do a C on the bottom, it's actually going to recognize all of these as C, which is good. We can do some more extended chords like a C major seven. Works great as well, sounds nice. Dominant seven, minor seven, it gets all of those. You can do ninths as well, but you're gonna need... Yeah, that will work as well. Diminished, it'll understand. You can do some lovely add twos as well. Let's go back to G. Regular G triad. G sus two. G four, and check out this lovely chord. Ha. Oh. I think that's a G sus four seven or something, I don't know. One of my favorite chords. But this is how you voice it on the keyboard. So this is what you need to learn. And it's not gonna be very easy to you in the beginning, probably. It does take a little bit of technique and training to get this right. As a bit of a jazzer myself, I would actually play a D minor seven like this. And I would play a G like this. If I switch that off and I play the root for you, you'll see what I mean. That's the voicings my left hand is very comfortable in doing for a D minor and a G7. But of course, this one's not going to recognize that because it's got no way of knowing if this is a D minor 7 or a F major 7. So just stick with the basic triads. So yeah, this is a bit of a learning curve for me not to play any jazzy chords because it doesn't really know what I'm doing right now. Not in this mode anyway. <laughs> so that's a topic we'll have to explore later as I get better at this. Another thing to bear in mind is that as piano players, keyboard players, we are trained to play tight on the beat, yeah? You want to be hitting that chord on the downbeat usually, on the one uh, when you come into a new measure or a new bar. Not going to work so well on these keyboards. You need to tell it a little bit in advance what chord is coming up. So you need to be hitting your triads just a fraction before the next bar starts, which is also something you'll need to work on a little bit. But I found that came quite quickly. Okay, we're doing good. We figured out what to do with our left hand and we'll put that into practice in just a second, don't worry. But with our right hand then, I've got my piano sound right now, but what I suggest you do, look for these one touch setting buttons, press the first one, and this will call up a sound, a lead sound, a melody sound that's appropriate for the style you've chosen. So our vocal waltz has got this nice little trumpet there. If I press the second setting, we have another sound as well. Nice little jazzy piano there, over here. <laughs> we have a vocal. <laughs> and on the fourth pad here, ooh, a chuffy saxophone. So those are some sounds we can instantly call up and these are tailor-made. As soon as you load a style, you'll get some suitable voices there. So that's what I recommend you use just to get started. Oh, and remember not to play lower than your split point. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Another thing we just noticed is that when you choose a one touch setting, it arms the style, meaning that you're ready to play. Let's uh, talk about that. Okay, let's prep the keyboard for our first performance and Choose the sound you want. I chose the first one here. Our little trumpet there, and everything is actually armed for us, but there's a few settings that you need to check. The sync start is enabled now. You see that's lit up, which means that the keyboard will start to play as soon as we do something with our left hand. That'll kick the style off, kick off the virtual band. We've also got the yeah, the arrangement on, of course. This is nice to have on. That will do a fill when you change between the variations. I also recommend, for fun, for giggles, switch on the OTS link. This will link the variations with the sounds so that when we change a variation of this style, we'll get a different lead sound as well, which is really fun. 
Now, other things you need to think about when you're prepping the keyboard for your first performance is which variation you want to start with. And why don't we start with the most simple variation? And then as the song progresses, we can make it slightly more sophisticated and busy because the first variation is always the simplest and then they get gradually more and more complex. So that's good. Think about also if you want to have a nice little intro to your song. I think we'll do that today just for fun. So let's go for the most complicated intro. That's selected, that's orange now. This is blinking, meaning that after the intro, we're going to be coming into variation one. And now we can think about actually doing our song. And I'm going to do something in the key of G. As a piano player, when you're just playing by yourself on the piano, you'll probably want to set up the introduction so you're coming in on a D or something the dominant, which leads you down to the G. Don't do that on an arranger. If you're playing in the key of G, just play the key of the G triad. And then the introduction will do the chord changes for you and set you up really nicely for the song. Okay, we're ready to go. As I was playing around with this style earlier, I find myself playing the melody to Georgia, which is really strange because as you know, Georgia is not a waltz, but it seemed to work. And I've printed out the chords here, written out the chords in case you want to follow along with me. Now, the biggest challenge with these long intros is knowing what to do with yourself and your hands as the intro is playing. I'm gonna kick it off in the key of G. Really good, didn't it? Now we're going to go into the second verse, and maybe we'll use a variation now with a bit of fill. We're up, we're on the D. It'll be perfect to come into the G again. Here we go. Press the button at the right time. Very light keyboard, easy to play wrong notes. Okay, you wouldn't normally have a break like this, but I just wanted to talk to you. Now, if you don't like the sound, and I don't like this one, you can just change back to something else. That's better. sophisticated one. No, still can't do the cube. I've owned this keyboard now for four days. I've made three videos with it and played it in total for about 20 hours. So now I think is the perfect time for me to give you my first impressions review of this keyboard. I won't do it now, it'll come out in a separate video in the next few days. Yes, I have some strong opinions about this compared to the previous Arranger keyboards I've owned, which is the 970 
the 910. I'll also try and compare it to the Genos to you. I'll just share my pros and cons of this so far, just my initial impressions, okay? So stay tuned for that one. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, and perhaps, and thank you if you have, and perhaps you might consider following, following me on Instagram because I do a Groove of the Day series where I play a different song, or groove or pattern every day, live on my Instagram. And right now we're featuring the PSR SX900. So hope to see you there. I'll catch you again next time. Cheerio. Just wanted to tell you about my piano inspiration series. These are video lessons with the goal of improving playing technique, building music theory knowledge and broadening your repertoire. I've created lessons for players of all abilities and we cover a wide variety of topics and musical genres. I'm really proud of how they came out. Subscribe to my Patreon or join my YouTube channel and you'll get two new episodes every month plus instant access to the entire archive. If you prefer, you can watch old episodes for free on Skillshare when you use my link. More information in the video description or on my website. 